Welcome to the second interview of the Breath of Fresh Air series. If you are interested in learning more about the Clearing the Air initiative, find us on Facebook or by emailing us at clearingtheair2015 at gmail.com. This installment features Elisa Lee. Elisa, a recent college grad, spent her first post-grad year working for a community organization that worked to stop the local incineration plant based in California. My name is Elisa Lee. I'm originally from California. I consider myself from Modesto, which is located in the Northern Central Valley in Stanislaus County. I went to college at UCLA from 2010 to 2014. I am now the campus divestment organizer for the Better Future Project based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I have never lived directly by an incinerator, so um, my experience was really working on a campaign related to reducing incineration and reliance on incineration in my county though. Um, California has three incinerators, or as we call them, just trash burners. <laughs> and um, one is located in Stanislaus County in the unincorporated territory of Crow's Landing, a road called Fink Road, and it's called the Covanta Stanislaus plant. So I found out about this incinerator in January 2015 um, when I went to a meeting for the Valley Improvement Projects, or VIP, which is um, pretty much the only community grassroots environmental justice group in, in the area. So I went to one of their meetings for the first time and found out that that was one of the campaigns that they were doing to try to stop incineration in the county as a way to both call attention to our air quality and our general public health and also the way environmental racism affects folks of color in the county and to try to shift us away from non renewable and non unsustainable sources of both energy and waste treatments and then to shift us more toward closed loop systems. So that's how I first found out about the incinerator in Stanislaus County and I'd heard about incineration throughout my time in college, but it wasn't a, something I worked on until I left UCLA, came back home to Modesto, and, and found out about it from this group. So I definitely give a lot of credit to VIP for both holding that campaign down and, and educating the public about it. VIP was a grassroots group focused on environmental justice and sustainability. They used to have a really great community center where they would hold workshops around knowing your rights. They were also really focused on calling attention to tenants' rights and police brutality in the county. VIP had been around for a long time and the founding members, uh, Emiliano Mataka, who just passed away in August. His family, John and Rosenda Mataka, have been very prominent in the neighborhood of Grayson, doing a lot of great work in their community of starting community centers and starting protests. And they headed up the Grayson Neighborhood Council, which was a group that first protested and, and fought against the incinerator being built. So they'd been working quite a long time to raise awareness about the dangers of incineration and the need to have other ways of disposing our waste that don't harm um, the health of people who, you know, never had a choice in terms of the incinerator being located next to them. And I know that they, along with VIP, were successfully able to stop the burning of hazardous medical waste in that facility, but because it's a difficult environment in Stanislaus County to get people to mobilize and care about social issues or really anything political in the first place, um, they never got, I think, the critical mass needed to actually fight, you know, the incinerator. So in my time with them, we were really working on the research front of what is being burned there, how is it being sorted, what are the workers doing, and also what are the waste options, like, before they get to the incinerator, you know, what does the composting and recycling look like in the county. So really trying to focus on how can we make incineration not even a valuable or a uh, fiscally feasible option anymore so that we can at least um, be working toward the solutions even if we can't end the incineration practice right now. With Covanta, which is a company that owns the incineration plant, they own quite a few incinerators across the country and they're based originally in New Jersey. Um, Covanta is a very prominent and um, I suppose you could say esteemed 
body in the county. They work very closely with the city, which isn't uncommon for incinerators. Um, so the city of Modesto and Covanta are very much closely tied. They give a lot of money and they have a lot of esteem and a, a very good reputation generally in the county. So much so that Covanta has long been a corporate sponsor of the annual Earth Day Fair in Modesto. Um, they proudly have a table that says the Covanta Waste to Energy Plant. The, the logo is green and um, yellow and looks very welcoming and they have, if you go onto their website, you see pictures of leaves and a whole section around their sustainability operations, which are mostly around how the, the processes that burn the waste can help generate some of the energy. So that's their biggest call to being a sustainable company and, and why the city allows them to be a corporate sponsor. So that's also been a huge part of our campaign as VIP is to end Covanta's corporate sponsorship and call attention to the hypocrisy and the dissonance of having a, an incinerator that pollutes our air and profits off of the accumulation of trash to, to be a sponsor of an Earth Day Fair. So an, an interesting to note about Covanta Stanislaus is that it is the only incinerator in California that receives renewable energy credits. So they actually get uh, credits that they can um, count as like being a renewable energy facility, um, which is not true for any of the other incinerators in California, even though they also create some energy. So why is that? Why does Covanta Stanislaus get those credits? It was kind of a deal that was made as part of a, I think it was a district supervisor. It was kind of like in order to create some restrictions on Covanta Stanislaus that had to come around as part of some legislation that passed a, you know, a few years ago, I don't remember the exact year. Um, they said, well, if you allow us to have these restrictions, then we'll say that you can get renewable energy credits and then business is still good, right? Basically, they just had to pay a higher cost to, to incinerate some things. And um, it was just kind of part of this deal that obviously had no input from the community or any sense of like logic as far as an incinerator getting renewable energy credits. It was just a deal that was struck between Covanta and a few people within the city who wanted to appease them and make them happy with something that they were required to do by the law. That's the nature of what the relationship is like with Covanta and the community. They have a lot of sway with district supervisors and with council members. And a, a big way that they are able to also hold that sway of the community is by, you know, saying we prevent landfills and, and landfills are really bad. and it, gives, unfortunately, the false dichotomy to the community that we can either only have a landfill or an incinerator and we don't have to work at all for evaluating the need to have to profit off of trash in the first place. It's been a long fight to get Covanta to not even be a sponsor and to just basically say if they want to give money then take off all the branding, don't put their name there. If they want to give money for the good of the community then let them do that but don't let them get all this branding and marketing off of it. It's hard for me to say what the community of Stanislaus County or even just Modesto thinks about the incineration plant. You don't see a lot of organizing coming out of that area or like a lot of movement to get a big platform. It happens and, and there are people there who, who work hold rallies and, and are doing great work, but part of the issue is that we're very spread out. The county itself is very large and geographically and like there's not really a lot of city centers that you see around. It's not as closely connected. You can't see things as well as you can in, in Boston. That's such a tightly knit sort of city. At the Earth Day Fair this year, which was in April 2015, um, we went and flyered around the fair explaining that Covanta um, is a sponsor of this fair, but you know what their incinerator does and why we think that that doesn't make sense and why we want to demand the county to come up with actual waste solutions that don't rely on incineration. Um, and most people were pretty receptive. I mean, Flyer, they were surprised that they didn't actually really know Covanta was an incineration plant. They saw the kind of booth there, um, and some of them knew the name, but they weren't really aware of what it was doing. Um, and so some people were, were surprised or were, um, you know, hadn't heard about it before. And some people were, were interested, but people take it as a status quo. They always think that an incinerator is necessary and that they just accept it as it is. Um, and I think that's, that's a broad statement, but I think it's generally true for the area that like things are kind of accepted as they are. And the things that are looked down upon 
are really the actual issues coming up, or especially around like the environment and sustainability. Those are not very prominent issues that are discussed or, or really encouraged. Even though we have one of the worst air quality in the state and really high rate of respiratory illnesses, especially in... And when the incinerator was first built, I, I know that people in the area didn't want it, but being built where it was in this unincorporated territory, this rural farmland area, was very intentional. The facility was built in 1989, and before when they were trying to find a place for where it was going to be built, Covanta and the city commissioned a report by the surreal report that came out of that search basically said, you know, look for places that are low income, rural, farm working, Spanish speaking, Catholic, and high school educated or less. The implication being that these are the people who are least likely to, to speak up or say anything or do anything about this. The Crow's Landing area itself doesn't have that many people. Most people live in Modesto and it's such a large city and such a high income gap and I think people just generally aren't used to having to be disrupted or to, to care about things that aren't really happening directly to them. I think people acknowledge that it exists and that it doesn't have to exist and then to engage further in what are the solutions and what are the paths to, to not having to rely on this. I know VIP went on a bunch of uh, kind of tours and interviews to the different waste disposal facilities and they did a brief one of the Pink Landfill, also in Crow's Landing. They found out that the fly ash from the incineration plant was not being stored in like the type of facility that it's supposed to be in and, and that like the type of landfill that we have. The fly ash isn't supposed to go there because it has contains heavy metals, it has cadmium and lead and iron, but that's where it's going. And so they were also trying to say, like, not only does the fly ash go into the landfill, but it's not even being regulated properly. There are people who live in that company. It's not like their house is right next to it. It is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, people live in Crow's Landing. There are schools there. It's not super large of an area. You're not like walking past incinerator. But yeah, so like they're past an overpass here. So like, I don't think there are any people living on this side, but there are definitely people living along here. And I think probably this is where like, a lot of the schools are. Before I left Modesto, a lot of what I was spending time on was meeting with some of my old high school teachers, who I remembered as being very progressive and keenly interested in working with the community and with orienting students to work with the community. And so there was a lot of progress and a lot of vision to be made around working with youth on how to organize and how to build campaigns and what is environmental justice. More recycling and more composting and bringing attention to reducing incineration through schools. Especially in our area where people tend to be very conservative and, and not really want to change their ways, that it was really about um, moving youth and getting youth really excited and also giving them the opportunity to engage and to feel like all of their skills and their knowledge was being fully valued. Never leave out youth and always find spaces for them to offer their excitement and their energy and their knowledge and their passion and work with them directly as often as possible. Give them ways to get involved. They're a lot smarter than we think and they're a lot more willing to help than we think and they also want to feel more valuable and to feel like they have a purpose.